Hello and a very warm welcome to the Bharata First podcast. This is Frank Rausen Pereira doing a reading of Sri Rajagopalachari's Mahabharata. Chapter 66 The Third Day's Battle On the morning of the third day Bhishma arrayed his army in eagle formation and himself led it while Duryodhana and his forces protected the rear so great was the care taken over every detail that the Kauravas were certain that there could be no mishap for them that day the Pandavas too arrayed their forces with skill Dhananjaya and Drishtadyumna decided in favor of a crescent formation of their army so as more effectually to cope with the eagle formation of the enemy's forces on the right horn of the crescent stood bhima and on the left arjuna leading the respective divisions the battle began all arms were at once engaged and blood flowed in torrents and dust that was raised by chariots horses and elephants rose to hide the sun dhananjaya's attack was powerful but the enemy stood firm a counter attack was made by the kauravas concentrating on arjuna's position javelins and spears and other missiles flew in the air shining like forked lightning in a thunderstorm like a great cloud of locusts the shafts covered arjuna's chariot but with amazing skill he raised a moving fortification around his chariot with arrows discharged in an unending stream from his famous bow at another point shakuni led a large force against satyaki and abhimanyu satyaki's chariot was broken to shivers and he had to scramble up abhimanyu's chariot and thereafter both fought from the same chariot they were able to destroy shakuni's forces drona and bhishma jointly attacked dharmaputra's division and nakula and sahadeva joined their brother in opposing drona's offensive bhima and his son gatotkacha attacked duryodhana's division and in that day's battle the sun appeared to excel his great father in valor bhima's shafts hit duryodhana and he lay in swoon in his chariot his charioteer quickly drove the chariot away from the scene fearing that the forces would be completely demoralized if they saw that the prince had been disabled but even this movement created great confusion bhima sena took full advantage of the position and worked havoc among the fleeing kaurava forces drona and bhishma who saw the discomfiture and confusion of the kaurava army came up quickly and restored confidence the scattered forces were brought together and duryodhana was again seen leading them how can you stand thus said duryodhana to the grand sire looking on when our forces are scattered and put to disgraceful flight i fear you are too kind to the pandavas why did you not tell me frankly i love the pandavas drishtadyumna and satyaki are my friends and i cannot attack or slay them you should have stated the position explicitly to me surely these men are not equal to you and if you were so minded you could deal with them easily even now it would be best if you and drona told me frankly your mind in the matter the chagrin of defeat and the knowledge that the grand sire disapproved of his ways made duryodhana speak thus bitterly but bhishma merely smiled and said wasn't i quite frank in my advice to you that advice you rejected when you decided on war i tried to prevent the war but now that it has come i am fulfilling my duties by you with all my might i am an old man and what i am doing is quite my utmost saying thus the grand sire resumed his operations the turn of events in the forenoon had been so much in their favor that the delighted pandavas were now somewhat careless they did not expect bhishma to rally his forces and attack them again but stung by duryodhana's reproaches the grand sire raged about the field like a destroying foe he rallied his men and delivered the most severe attack yet made on the pandava army the latter thought that the grand sire had multiplied himself into a number of bhishmas fighting at several points so swift were his movements that afternoon those who opposed him were struck down and perished like moths in the fire the pandava army was thoroughly broken and began to scatter vasudeva partha and shikandi tried hard to restore order and confidence but were unsuccessful dhananjaya said krishna now has the critical time come be true to your decision not to flinch from your duty to kill in battle bhishma drona and all other friends and relatives and respected elders you have pledged yourself to it and you have now to carry it out otherwise our army is lost beyond redemption you must now attack the grand sire 
Drive on, said Arjuna. As Dhananjaya's chariot sped on towards Bhishma, it met a hot reception from the grandsire who covered it with his arrows. But Arjuna bent his bow and discharged three shafts which broke the grandsire's bow. Bhishma picked up another bow, but it too met the same fate. The grandsire's heart was gladdened when he saw Arjuna's skill in archery. Hail, brave warrior, applauded the grandsire, even as taking up another bow, he poured shafts on Arjuna's chariot with unerring aim. Krishna was not happy at the way Arjuna met the attack. The grandsire's bow was working fearlessly, but Arjuna's hands did not do their best, for his heart was not in it. He did too much regard for his great-grandsire. Krishna thought that if Arjuna went on like this, the army, which had been so badly demoralized already, would be utterly destroyed and all would be lost. Krishna managed the chariot skillfully, but in spite of it, both he and Arjuna were hit many times by Bhishma's arrows. Janardana's anger rose. I can stand this no longer, Arjuna. I shall kill Bhishma myself if you will not do it. He exclaimed and dropping the reins, he took up his discus and jumped down from the chariot and dashed forward towards Bhishma. Bhishma was far from being perturbed at this. On the contrary, his face expanded with ecstatic joy. Come, come, O lotus-eyed one, he exclaimed. I bow to you, O Madhava, lord of the world. Have you indeed come down from the chariot for my sake? I offer you my life. If I be slain by you, I shall be glorified in the three worlds. Give me that boon. May your hands take this life away and save me for eternity. Arjuna was distressed to see this. He jumped down and ran after Krishna. Overtaking him with great difficulty, he entreated Krishna to turn back. Do not lose your patience with me. Desist and I promise not to flinch. He said and persuaded Krishna to return. The chariot reins were again in Krishna's hands. Arjuna attacked the Kaurava forces furiously and thousands were slain by him. The Kauravas suffered a severe defeat on the evening of the third day. As they returned to their camps in torchlight, they said to one another, Who can equal Arjuna? There is nothing strange in his being victorious. So marvellous was Arjuna's prowess that day. That's it in this chapter. This is Frank Rausen Pereira signing off. Do like and subscribe to the podcast and also do the same on YouTube along with hitting the bell icon. Please follow Bharata first on Twitter and Instagram as well. Thank you.